We have eliminated all departments, all sectors, even though the sectors are coming because now all the powers that come out from one people, all of them into one. Now, what is the solution? We found one uh, department, not a smaller department, a small group, but the uh, thing known as Invest Punjab. You have one in, in the Invest Punjab. We have a CEO, Mr. Anrud Tiwari. Is a friend CEO. Can I see him? He is the CEO of Punjab Invest Punjab. So he is the CEO of Punjab. You want to invest in anything? Anything means anything in Punjab. You have to go to one office, fancy office, and do it up. So that you can even want to stay the night, you can stay there. <laughs> but one, one office, one man, one application, and you don't have to go. Through. He has now powers of. Now he is. He's got powers of chairman position board. He's got power of chairman lecture board. He's got powers of labor, powers of factory, powers of forest, powers of local. This thing. So every power. You don't have the power of converting everything in your name. <laughs> so every, every, all the 10, 20 places officers used to go to, like pollution is hassling you, forest clearance required, you need uh, local government, some uh, plans, cleared, CLU, Yeo, all that, nothing. One man, one small application. And in that application is self-assessment. You say, you, you have done this, these are the 10, rules you are supposed to follow and if your architect certifies the building has for law, fine. You say take yes. You do all yes in his office and the same day you will get, if all is as per, all, all is clear, the same day you will get a number and you can start business. Or if you, the other things, if you buy for on non yes you need some pollution, some changes or anything, within 15-20 days. Because you don't have to go to anywhere, one man. He's got every department under him. In, in his main office only he has one person from every department and that's it. Only deal with one man. I think there is nowhere in this country where this such a significant, this is an innovative idea of ours that one CEO of Invest Punjab will have powers of everything. So now you won't have to worry about any, you don't have to look for me or you don't have to look for the chief minister, you don't have to look for a minister, you just have to recognize his face and just catch it. <laughs> and then you can invest and start your work, you are free to start your work. He will even assist you in getting land, for example, you won't get rest, then he gets his job. You know, we have to talk to him only, nobody else. This is the first problem, solution to the first problem. Now, second, we have done a lot of reforms and we continue doing that, as I mentioned. Like labor reforms. Today, as per law, you need a factory, has to keep 47 registers of labor. We have eliminated 47 million to do. <coughs> Multiple sanctions, we are self attestation we are doing everything self-certification. And let's see who's investing. A huge amount. Obviously, he's not going to put anything wrong. It is his, he gave the certificate that yes, this is as per law, these boilers as per specification, or these everything as the lecture is as per. I'm open to suggestions. If you feel we can do anything better than this, we can take decisions. We don't have a high command whom we have passed. Our high command is sitting here. <laughs> so we can take decisions anytime. You tell us a situation which is good, within five days we call a cabinet and we take a decision. That is the level of uh, proactiveness we have. So our aim is, if you suggest us that this data comes something which is easier to do business or other things, we are ready to be. But we want, this is your state. India begins here. If you look at the India map, if you come from Pakistan and I said it begins here. And with the opening of the border of Pakistan, I think, and with this part of the world, I think this is the best location Punjab has. We have excellent work environment, we have excellent infrastructure, everything. And I think once you go through, you can't. I like to personally thank Mr. Mani for his sparing time from his busy schedule and coming here. Mr. Mittal, Ellen Mittal, who flew in from England just for the summit.
It's a great honor, sir. Dr. Kiran Mujumdar, ma'am, I went and met you there. I requested you and I'm so happy you have come. Sir, Mr. Sunil Bharti Mitterji, I called him and he said anything for Punjab. Sorry, all of Punjabi. Simri Rajiv Singh, good friend, Punjabi in the old Punjab. Where Haryana was part of Punjab. But uh, can I tell you something? DLFS, what DLF has done today, but now, I personally say, you know, American style is full of You see the size of the malls, you see the walking spaces and everything, and the entertainment center. He's the guy. And I think we are honored to have you here, sir. We have invested. We are always there for you. You come first, we come behind you. Whatever you need, we are there. Honorable Chief Minister, under his guidance, Punjab, I must tell you, wait and see next few years. It's going to cross all limits beyond your imagination. Thank you very much. Joint Managing Director, Hero Protocol. On the passing away of a giant leader, Mr. Nelson Mandela. On a happier note, Badal Saud birthday. And for us in our family, also a special day, because for a long time we have been celebrating the 9th of December as the Founders Day for Eva Cycle. With my uncle, my late uncle Dayananji, 100th birthday today. So it is for us. Truly a special day. And of course, what we are seeing here today. So we have many, many congratulations. They say fortune favors the brave. And truly, you are being brave. I will let you all on in, into a little secret. He said, Sunil has, has worked with me and helped me. First time when he called me to say, Will you help me in, in designing some policy for industry and for economy? I said, I'm sorry, I won't. He said, why would you not? If people like you, people from Punjab don't help, how will Punjab move forward? I said, frankly, the impression clearly is the focus is a lot on agriculture, which is good, but frankly, very little on industry. His response was, why don't you come and have a conversation, and then you decide. I said, that's very fair, and we did that. So I, I put some conditionalities. I said, I'm happy to come in. But I would like that you actually implement suggestions and ideas that you get. When I went to, went to meet with him, I spoke for 20 minutes and he spoke for an hour and a half. The need for a good industrial policy. We spoke to over 100 members of industry across the state. Big, small, mid-sized, different industry seg segments and also different geographical parts of Punjab. We also went to and spoke to industry outside of Punjab. We used help from BCG, one of the world's leading consulting firm. And when we made a set of recommendations, I actually called Mr. Badal to ask him whether he's read this. He's saying, I've not had time yet. I said, then let's have the next meeting after you've read this. When we went for the next meeting, he's saying, by the way, we've already designed a new policy. And all of the suggestions that were there, in the recommendations are part of the policy. That this look east as the policy which was made some time back uh, by India will be pushed forward by Punjab. You could actually build a complete uh, township based on, on investments from the east and you could even call it the Sunrise City for yourself. You're, you're building new cities so, so you could look at that. And from our side I would say this is truly uh, a rewarding experience having worked uh, in this uh, advisory capacity to see things getting implemented and big focus on governance reform is truly welcome. From our side, we have recently uh, commissioned a new factory in Ludhiana and uh, we would be more than happy to bring in uh, an additional to all the people in Punjab and from our side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Sunita Munjal, for your opening remarks as the industry leaders. I will now call upon Mr. Mukesh Amari, 
Chairman and Managing Director, Chief Minister Sri Prakashin Badalji, Honorable Deputy Chief Minister Sri Sukhbir Singh Badalji, my colleagues on the dais, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to be here at the first progressive Punjab Investor Summit in these wonderful environments of the ISB. I had heard a lot about it, but seeing is believing this is truly a world-class institution. So congratulations. <laughs> really to Sunil, both the Sunils, uh, Atul, and all of you behind it, uh, and to everybody else. Today's event is a reflection of the foresight of Punjab's leaders. In Sri Prakash Singh Ji, Badal Ji, and Sukhbir Singh Ji, we have leaders with a grand vision and the determination to translate it into reality. While the Deputy Chief Minister was uh, making his presentation, both Yogi and I were telling each other, that uh, see how much India has changed. And I think that from the change that you presented, the change that you believe in is real, and I congratulate you on that. It was also when uh, the Deputy Chief Minister visited me in uh, Mumbai, and uh, for us uh, uh, at uh, Reliance, we are uh, investing really pan-India across all the 26 states. And uh, he shared with me his vision. Uh, when he came to visit me, I love Punjabi food, so I was already a half Punjabi at heart. But after my meeting, I was a full Punjabi at heart. And I think his uh, infectious uh, enthusiasm is uh, his vision, and more than anything else, it's the very few times that I've met him, but uh, that really said that this is different. And then when we actually uh, tried, right, and this was just six or eight weeks ago, and we agreed to a few things, and I can tell you that I am personally experienced the fast track movement that not only you and your administration have. So I have to thank you for all this. I also have had personally over the years, uh, being in Delhi, uh, very good associations with a lot of IAS and uh, IPS officers from this state. I compliment and congratulate this state's administration really for supporting the Chief Minister's vision and no wonder all the numbers that you presented right, are an outcome of this. So ladies and gentlemen, being at the forefront is nothing new for Punjab. It has been a cradle of spiritual quest, cultural synthesis, and human development since thousands of years. Punjab has been the birthplace of patriots, freedom fighters, martyrs, and our brave soldiers. Punjabis have become brand ambassadors of India across all walks of life, not only in India, but through the entire world. Friends, Punjab has made most not only of its opportunities but also of its challenges. Its pragmatic approach to industrial relations and income will go but are present in Punjab uh, in virtually all our businesses. We are present in manufacturing, we are present in retail and uh, now we are rolling out uh, the digital infrastructure through our 4G services. I want to speak to you specifically of really uh, two initiatives. One, what we are doing, and I was just telling the uh, Deputy Chief Minister that at Reliance we normally don't speak by words, we only speak by action. Uh, but uh, fundamentally I just wanted to share with you uh, what we believe uh, mass digitization does, and then a few ideas on our foundation. 
Punjab has pioneered the green revolution in India. Today, industry has grown by leaps and bounds in Punjab, making it much more than the traditional bread basket of our nation. From the green revolution, Punjab, I believe, should aim at becoming a leader in the digital revolution. This digital revolution is unlike all revolutions we have seen in the past. It will enrich agriculture, industry, and services. It will bring unprecedented new benefits to education, healthcare, governance, and fields of art, culture, and entertainment. It will form all the potential investors that we have completed this project very much on time. And we have also been very much within our investment project plan. So the credit really goes to the leadership of this state. Prakash Singh Badalji and Sukhbir Singh Badalji. I had several meetings with all of them and I can tell you that they have been very, very cooperative, very, very understanding and very supportive to us. I don't live in India, I live in, in Europe. And for me, it was a very different experience coming to the state of Punjab and planning to invest 20,000 crores of peace and not going the state level. We all know Delhi, we all know Bombay, we all know Gujarat, but not many people knew that what sort of government is, is in Punjab and how they would be supportive and how they would be helpful. <coughs> like any other projects, we needed 470 approvals. And that is nothing new for this country. Reliance Industries is a great example led by Mukesh that how Gujarat has developed because when Reliance built a refinery in Jamnagar 20, 25 years back, it just started like we started, but I'm sure that the kind of encouragement it gave to the industries and the industrialists to come and build the downstream, build the infrastructure, today that is the most prosperous state. And I think the credit goes to Mukesh and his refinery in Jamnagar. So really, I hope and I believe that with the support of the state, with you, the investors coming into this state, will come to Patinda or go to different states and really build downstream industries, grow downstream industries. They will provide jobs, they provide the value, they will provide the prosperity to the nation. I think that uh, Honorable Chief Minister and uh, Deputy Chief Minister have been very active. They have been going from state to state. Whenever I had to meet Balaji, I had to meet in some, some corner village of this town, of this state, because he's never in the capital. And this is very encouraging. And I really invite you all to invest in Punjab. Not on, not on behalf of the government, but on my behalf as an investor who has a very positive experience of this state. So I wish you all the best. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Arvind for your wonderful words about this day. It's now my pleasure to invite Mr. I.C. Deveshwar, Chairman, ITC Limited, to join us. Thank Honorable Chief Minister, Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I want to express my gratitude that I've been invited to this summit and I've been given an opportunity to say a few words. I'll be honest with you, the other day I received a letter from the Deputy Chief Minister that there is going to be a summit and is going to visit Delhi and if I could arrange for some of our chief executives to meet with him in our hotels division headquarters at the ITC Green Centre um, and I would be welcome but if I am busy then I need not be there. 
So I, uh, we have 13 chief executives running 13 distinct Ljana and Jalanda. And I promise you that we will set up a, and showcase a globally competitive and state-of-the-art food processing industry in India. And I will, I have an appointment with you and half come to RC Kya. We, and I don't know about Mr. Trivedi, what was his name? Tiwari, uh, Mr. Tiwari. But let me say that we'll put your single window clearance to test uh, today itself. Uh, and, and we are, I, actually I'm quite amazed at the kind of governance reform. Uh, I think self sacrifice ki bahut dile aati hai bahut darishmand aati hai par importantly bachcho ko bahut darya dilati hai madhu sir thoda hamesha sun bahut pyar mila hai dukh sukh de vich tusi hamesha mitra parivar de naal rahe ho sare sari shaadi vyah te sare events te tusi aage sada hausla sai ke liye hamesha और एक पंजाब की एक कंपनी है जरा छोटा जहा एक बूटा बड़े साल पहले इतने छोटे जो शहर हमारा बेच लगे ऐसी एंड दैट लिटिल फैक्ट्री टुडे स्टार्टेड द सीड ऑफ द टेलीकॉम रेवोल्यूशन इन इंडिया दैट वाज राइट हियर इन पंजाब इन द विलेज हमारा बीटल फोन्स वर मैन्युफैक्चर्ड एंड आर बीइंग मैन्युफैक्चर्ड इन मिलियंस कॉर्डलेस फोन्स आसिंग मशीन्स फैक्स मशीन्स and from there the revolution of bharti and the telecom in india started i was the first private sector person to be in the telecom field and that little experiment that we started in punjab today is spread across 20 countries 285 million customers hopefully very happy customers and ever growing a company which has put up a massive telecom infrastructure in india and other countries 140,000 kilometers of fiber, over 150,000 base stations, submarine cables, satellite nodes, serving the very vital needs of this nation. And whenever Bharti has had an opportunity, Honorable Chief Minister Sir, we have come back home every time. So, greatly, you will be very pleased to know that we have not stopped. We are Punjabis by heart. We are Punjabis who were born and raised here, and we owe a debt of gratitude to our home state. When Sukhvirji called me, he said, "Are you going to give the entire digital space to a Punjabi at heart, Mukesh Ambani, or did you do something?" <laughs> I said, "We split it half and half." <laughs> so, as Mukesh mentioned, we are both feverishly working towards. Supporting this state and converting this state into the finest digital platform this country will ever see. We also have other investments in the state. Uh, we have very large retail presence. India's first model farm in 300 acres is just. Honorable Deputy Chief Minister Sukhvi Badalji. Honorable Industry and Commerce Minister Sri Vipaji. Distinguished friends. and colleagues first and foremost i'd like to thank you sukhvi for the kind words about dlf and our contribution to the development of gurgaon in punjab encouraged by sukhvi in the last 6 years dlf has invested across three cities new chandigarh jalandhar and ludhiana some of our projects have taken off and the rest of our projects are now on the launching pad stage we completely share and believe in the vision set out by the dynamic government of shri prakash singh badal ji and supported by shri sudhir badal ji i would just like to say that we believe we are long term investors 
we have a long term commitment, we have an emotional bond, you are absolutely correct, Punjab and Haryana may have split as a political entity but in our hearts we are one and we in a true spirit of pub uh, public private partnership will do whatever it takes to make sure that New Chandigarh is a model development and I don't want to say it, but still we will try our best to make sure that all the learnings of Gurmao are fully implemented and New Chandigarh in fact emerges as quote unquote the new Gurmao. So I will do everything possible in this regard. The clear vision and the clear determination of both the Chief Minister and the Deputy Chief Minister to want the best for the state and the best for the people is what encourages us. Well, it's very, very easy nowadays to make statements, but very difficult to deliver on them. And I can say with experience, over the last five, six years in an industry as difficult as real estate, as approval, as well as procedurally oriented industry as real estate, the level of involvement, the level of support, and the level of decision making which we have experienced, I can safely say nowhere else in India does any other state even come close. The leadership here is always accessible and always willing to listen. And as long as the proposal is fair, transparent, and in the best interest of the people, they are always willing to act. And we welcome that. As a company, we believe in the same principles and we will do everything possible to make sure that the vision set out by the Chief Minister and Sukhvirji is fully implemented. I would personally like to encourage each one of you who have come down today for this summit to really look at Punjab with all seriousness, to invest in Punjab, take it from me. There's a lot of potential here. The true strength of Punjab, I think Sukhvir has mentioned many things in his uh, presentation. I think the true strength of Punjab is in its people and in its character of its people. They are very enterprising, very hardworking, want a good quality of life and will do everything possible to make their and their families lots better. And frankly as a real estate developer, that's what we love because we love people who want to live well and we love to serve them with better quality housing and other social infrastructure. So I wish the government the best. I wish all of you great success in your endeavors in the state of Punjab and I personally look forward to many more such opportunities to interact and as I said with lots of success behind all of us. Thank you. It's my pleasure now to request Dr. Kiran Mohsamdar Shaw, Chairman and Management Director, IOCOM Limited, to address the gathering. Respected Chief Minister Shri Prakash Singh Badalji, respected and very dynamic Deputy Chief Minister Shri <coughs> Sukhviji, fellow members on the dais, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to be here and experience such a lot of enthusiasm and energy at the summit. And I for one, always believe that Punjab has always been progressive. It has led the way in terms of the agricultural revolution and has also led the way in textiles, pharmaceuticals and engineering. I do believe that the foresight that the Punjab government has shown in power, infrastructure and the very, very innovative and path-breaking investment policies are really the right ingredients for a recipe for success. <clears throat> and I, for one, can't help but being very envious of some of the very bold and innovative policy decisions that are being taken in this government, which I have no doubt will augur very, very well for an even more progressive Punjab. Now as all of us know, India ranks very poorly 
on the global ease of doing business index, where we rank around 134 on this list of rankings. And I can't help but feel that if this ranking was to be based on what Punjab is doing, we would probably be in the top 10. What you just heard this morning is very compelling for every investor to look at Punjab very seriously and to invest in Punjab. And I, for one, know that the visit of Sri Supi Singh Badarji to our own company in Bangalore not too long ago certainly evoked that spirit of <coughs> investment and the enthusiasm with which he approached this investment opportunity in Punjab was certainly very compelling. And as a company, I know that we are very seriously looking at now taking up this invitation to invest in Punjab. And you can be rest assured, sir, that we will be doing that in the not too distant future. I would also like to request the government to really unleash the entrepreneurial energy in this state of Punjab by really focusing on uh, startup entrepreneurs. <clears throat> it too is my great pleasure to be speaking to such a distinguished audience. I, I as well would like to thank His Honor, uh, Chief Minister, Deputy Chief Minister, and the respected Bottle family for hosting this investor summit. We're very proud to be expanding our operations here internationally in the country of India. Our corporation, Gumber Global, specializes in the development and ownership of major shopping malls. We're a corporation that is nearly 100 years of age, and I've had the benefit of a grandfather and a father preceding me, and I'm therefore fortunate to be standing here as the leader of our third generation. I would like to take you back some eight years. Our company, back in 2005, strategically began to worry about how we could organically grow the corporation, particularly within the U.S. footprint. There were very serious headwinds that we began to see forming. Some of the contributing factors included that the average dollar transaction per shopper was beginning to decline. And for the first time, there were competing uh, factors that were competing in terms of customers' share of wallet. Mortgage payments began to increase, and that, of course, came upon due to the, the boom in home uh, refinancing, which therefore caused a great deal of excess personal debt. Credit card usage became a pressing burden, and that led ultimately to an increase in credit card arrearages. The shopper visits to our malls uh, began to become less frequent in the United States, continued to stagnate, and inflation continued to rise. And in short, the American economy is heading, from our perspective, into a state of mutilation. And the engine that buttressed the United States economy for near four decades, that being consumer spend, had lost its way. And that meant for us that we needed to begin to do a search to find, as you all know, in the fourth quarter, for both five corporations like ourselves, brand retail was permitted, and ultimately, by 2012, international. And I will say to you that this was the first time should be located here in the Punjab. 
we brought together a blue ribbon of the best talent in the world, best architects, <clears throat> highly skilled designers who understood how to design a more horizontally based shopping mall experience that would ultimately lead to uh, great cross shopping, great foot traffic, and increased sales. We wanted to take advantage of what I'm proud to tell you is a two million square foot mall. It has 11 acres. Uh, I will mention the comments made earlier by the Deputy Chief Minister. <coughs> Hopefully our corporation I think there's some greater efficiencies and lessons learned on like seasonal absenteeism, which makes which makes construction timelines longer. Hear this. We would argue that we need more mechanization, less dependence on concrete, in favor of all steel will shorten the construction timeline and accelerate the pace of economic development and ultimately be more cost-effective. Recent announcements to liberalize the treatment of foreign banks to reduction of the cost of capital. And anything that can be done to open I know the really India, first India food should be in Punjab, not in Taipei. <laughs> And today, we returned by our Taiwan representative, Mr. C.K. Tian, here to encourage our delegation to make investment in Punjab, which are in line with uh, the Punjab understanding between Punjab government and the Taiwan CTCI group for investment of infrastructure and the construction for Punjab upcoming projects. <laughs> Especially the solid waste management. Because uh, Taiwan, the area is similar to Punjab the population also similar to Punjab. A very important social responsibility of the government. And we would like to commit ourselves with Punjab government. And actually, we start our investigation to invest. Deputy Chief Minister, should you please sing Various ministers from the government of Punjab, government officials, captains of industry on the dais, members in the audience, members of the press. We as a family have been in Punjab for over six generations from my mother's side and for three generations from my father's side after India and Pakistan had separated and India got independence. So from my perspective, and I think from my father's side, I have three generations who work with brothers up and continue to seek his guidance and his blessings as we continue to grow and make investments. All our businesses have started from Punjab, have been seeded in Punjab, and therefore Punjab truly has been our home ground, has been our birthplace, not only from a family perspective, but also from a business viewpoint. And it is with these humble beginnings for Ranbaxi and at Fortis that we have worked hard, we've got the love, the support of people in Punjab, and with everybody collectively putting their very best in place, have taken the Punjab flag around the world and reflected institutions built on excellence and delivering the best products and services around the world. As we are all aware, Punjabis are great entrepreneurs, are extremely hardworking and very committed. And as today, we are looking at going out to the world seeking investments and being a part of being able to 
work with the government and with Madrasa India class leaders as Punjabis that we continue to make our investments and show that Punjab is the preferred and the best place for making these investments. We as a group in Fortis and in Dwaligar have brought in four areas of business, which is healthcare delivery, medical education, financial services, and insurance. And we are committed to continue to make investments and increase our investments within the same. We've also signed an MOU where we're looking at adding a little over a thousand crores of investments in the area of healthcare to make sure that as we continue to progress and make Punjab a prosperous state, we can only do it if Punjab and Punjabis are healthy. And sir, we are your partners and we will continue to do that. Also, we've heard Mr. Ambani and Mr. Mittal talk about their foundations and what great work that they have been doing. And I would like to propose, sir, that we had voted. Honorable Chief Minister Shri Prakash Singh Badalji, Deputy Chief Minister Shri Sukhveer Singh Badalji, respected ministers and bureaucrats from the government of Punjab, captains from the industry, members of media, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to represent Rhinebaxi at the Progressive Punjab Investor Summit 2013, an extraordinary industry platform that has successfully brought India Incorporated under one roof. Rhinebaxi shares an extremely deep and strong relationship with Punjab, which began over 40 years ago when the company set up its first multi-purpose plant to manufacture active pharmaceutical ingredients at Mohali. Over the years, as Rambaxi grew to become an industry leader, it continued to deepen this bond by setting up additional large-scale, world-class API and dosage farm plants in Punjab with investments of greater than a thousand crore rupees. Today, Rambaxi is a model for other states. The vision for Punjab expressed by Shri Sukhvi Singh Badalji during his visit to our office in Gurgaon will certainly boost industrial growth in Punjab. Before I close, I would like to once again thank the government of Punjab for extending a very warm welcome and for providing me with the opportunity to express my Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, Shri Sukhvi Singh Badalji, Distinguished guests on the dais, ladies and gentlemen, I am honored for being given an opportunity to address this August gathering at the Progressive Punjab Investor Summit. I sincerely thank the Chief Minister and the Deputy Chief Minister for the invitation extended to And I would like to briefly mention about GBK. GBK has the proud of distinction of setting up India's first independent power project at Rajmandi in Andhra Pradesh in 1997. It has also has the distinction of setting up the first three to international standards. IFC Washington had picked up our Diego Code of Power Project as one of the five model power plants in the world with respect to health, safety and environment. And also we are having to airport and the PPP model, we operate them. We are the largest operators of the airports in India, that is Bangalore and Bombay. And also the, we have expanded Bangalore Airport and we are inaugurating the new terminal on 14th of this month. I have never, never, ever seen such things in any part of the world. And if you have any work, if there is any problem, everybody is available there and to find a solution. A positive solution. Solutions are found, helpful. They always find solutions even for every 
even problems, whatever we face. And then I would like to also mention further to this, we are expanding to into 660 megawatts in the same place and all the permissions we got only after getting the coal allocation and all that, we will go ahead with the project with a larger investment. And also this is a surplus change for the power. I think it's very difficult these days. Power has become a problem in the country. And also I see in other parts of the country, most of the power plant parts, even I have thousand megawatts of gas-based power plants with a lot of commitment, no gas. I'm losing a lot of money. As you see, next, in the first few states, on several metrics of development, be that infrastructure and many other aspects are social. <clears throat> but I like to therefore only leave it because I know I am speaking on an extended time. So I try to leave it on two or three aspects. One is that I have been a student of industrial development and lived through Punjab, born in Punjab, educated in Punjab, and I've been studying. That what is the basis of Punjab's growth, industrial growth? We are far away from mineral, the low minerals, natural environments are absolutely scarce. Ports, we are far away as the Honorable Deputy said, that we are not very attractive from that angle. But at the same time, it's very surprising and astonishing to all of you to know that Punjab has not lagged behind when it comes to industrial growth. In the state GDP, it still accounts for 21% in the manufacturing sector. The total industrial sector may be 23-24%, but since mining is not there, so manufacturing sector contributes in no small measure. And which is second to Gujarat, and therefore second rank are equal to Maharashtra. <laughs> now it may be surprised that we don't have large heavy industries except the one now which has been set up recently by Shri from in Virginia, Petro and Refinery. Now how could we achieve it? There's a great history behind it. Early start done by Punjab in small scale and medium industry and which through their own local entrepreneurship. That's one of the hallmarks of Punjab. That industry, 90% of the industry still in India and in Punjab is owned by people who have or started, initiated the career and started and gradually increased and scaled up. Now therefore, you see that it is a great integration which has taken place through the entrepreneurship of Punjabis. And now we are able to protect people from outside. And we are very happy to know that they have a very warm heart for Punjab and sometimes they feel as if they have the same spirit as Punjabis are because as entrepreneurs we are in Punjab. Sir, but the entrepreneurship does not thrive in my view in a vacuum. There must be some accompanying factors. And which I thought were alive for the benefit of all of you today, maybe if you just permit me to share my thoughts with you. It's an outcome of the dynamic process of political leadership. That's number one, positive political leadership. The second thing which I do look at in Punjab, so I'm therefore looking at from the angle of Punjab and what I have been studying. Social harmony, which prevails widely in Punjab and the attitude towards change and progress. This is the second aspect which I do analyze and find interestingly which has gone to create a congenial atmosphere for the entrepreneurs to grow. And third is that administrative alignment to the goals and vision of our leaders. As now we have seen that uh, our Deputy Chief Minister has given it actually reformed the vision now about the 21st century that how to take industry and economy forward. And the fourth 
in my view, which is last but not the least, is the culture. A culture which strongly impresses people to absorb and assimilate technology and culture, and technology and skills. And these four factors I have studied and found in Punjab all are facilitating the entrepreneurs to grow. As Mr. Shah said that Punjab must have policy for startups, new entrants, new entrepreneurs. Ma'am, I can tell you, entrepreneurs are born every day in Punjab. Everybody is keen as zeal to do business. If I ask my manager why he is leaving and sometimes he says, I just want to set up my own business now. Having had experience with you, thank you very much. And I intend to become an entrepreneur. As now you might, there is a lot of praise now. I am with our people, our business school people. They are becoming at least 20 percent trying to have their own venture, new venture. So Punjabis by nature are enterprising and therefore they are taking new views. But coming back, I would like to now give only two, three minutes to the story about how this culture has grown in Punjab because of political leadership here yeah, and the administrative alignment and the social arm. You know, the behavior of the entrepreneurs and their administration comes to the top. I have many experiences in my lifetime with various chief ministers and luckily I have been having experience with the present chief minister since 1970. And we are very fortunate that we have him, we had him five times as chief minister of Punjab and under his tenure, Punjab has progressed remarkably. Mid of 1970, one experience which I am giving you about the vision that he showed me at the time about the textile industry because I belong to that industry and which is one of the biggest industries of Punjab today even. Contributed almost 45 percent of the fixed capital of the total industry investment which has been done in the industry and contributed 25 percent of the employment in the organized sector in the, in, uh, the industry over here. Now he called me, he summoned me for a meeting in Ludhiana when the flag hoisting ceremony on 15th August was happening. I was surprised. I went and asked him, Sir, I am here. He said, Yes, meet me after this ceremony. And then I went. And he said, What can we do to attract and promote cotton spinning industry? Our farmers are growing so much cotton, but most of it is getting exported. So why not to create employment here? I am talking of early 70s. But so that was the vision of a leader given to me. And you'd be surprised that we in the industry went to him with some suggestions and proposals of giving some concession to the country. The next MOU is with Bhavdi as an investment of about 4,000 dollars. We now DLF Universal Limited, about 9,000 crores. In Chandigarh, Ludhiana, and Jarrah. Concerned setting up not only hospitals but also a medical university with a total investment of about 1,100 crores. For Randaxi Laboratory, we have existing ground and a new phase of about 1,000 crores. On behalf of CTCI, with the Punjab government, they have capacities in infrastructure, transport, power, renewable energy, waste energy. For Infosys Limited, I will request Mr. Ramadas Kamath to come up onto the dais and exchange the ever flag and employ about 20,000 persons. For the Hindu group next, I would request that the award may be exchanged for an investment of <laughs> and with Cargill India Private Limited. Cargill is already invested in a big way in Punjab. They are expanding their presence with a cattle feed mill plant and with <laughs> after Cargill we have Adlabs. 
represented by Sri Manmohan Shetty. Next, we have the Titan Group Spinning Paper for Health Institute at Parnara with a total investment of about 1,500 crore rupees and an employment potential. Of for Nahar Group, we have Mr. Kamal Oswal. The MOU and the Saudis a total investment of about 1,700 crore rupees in an industrial park, real estate, spinning, and garment. About 500 crore rupees. DSN, India Private Limited, is already present. Industry, ladies and gentlemen, I feel highly privileged to be here with you in the Progressive Punjab Investment Summit. Deputy Chief Minister Subhi Singh has in a great length put before you the policies of the Punjab government which they have decided to promote industry in the Punjab. Concessions, both power, pervading condition, Investigation. He has explained such a detail <coughs> that he has left nothing for me to say. <laughs> I was thinking that even as a good son, leave some point for me to say. <laughs> it doesn't look nice to say the same thing as has been uh, mentioned earlier. Mr. Saab sitting with me was always seeing the program when the interview will finish. <laughs> <laughs> so I also I also follow that Samal is beautiful. <laughs> Whether it's a speech or anything, if the things are settled, if the all the the, the result has come. Then why to bother the before the first thing? <laughs> so Veer Singh has explained to you the policy and you have agreed to invest the money. So the result of this event has come before. <laughs> but one thing is, I asked Vittal Saab, okay, what is this? Is the MOU is a commitment or not? <laughs> <laughs> if it is a commitment, the condition of Punjab will change with this commitment. He said it is a, not a commitment, but a memo of understanding. <laughs> so kindly, in future, change this word MOU to MO consent. <laughs> the MO promise. So that uh, things that whether it is small or big, it should be, uh, it should be as, as it deserves come, it should be very good. So I will ask you about two or more things. Our policies should be that it affects the poor people. We have we got in independence cities. Six years back. But after 60 years of independence, the people, poor people, are now suffering the most. And their number is also very high, not small. Until and unless, in every decision, whether it is industry, whether it is agriculture, or whether it is any great business, we should see how much it affects the poor. If the benefits 
of industry, trade, or business, anything does not go to the clear or the poor. It is not a good policy. Mahatma Gandhi ji, it's a famous quoting, I forgot the result of that quoting is, the best policy is that is good for the poor. So, our great gurus also have said that one should part 10% of the profit for the poor. So that they can also progress and uh, they can have good life. In the, they, they have good fruits in his life, their life. So one thing I will say <coughs> that you have mentioned at the small meeting also said that in this country biggest problem is unplanned. And that can be solved only by industry. Agriculture has reached a saturation point and it give, cannot give bread to more people. Now the only alternative for giving livelihood to the people who are uneducated one educated up to 10 or 12 classes and they are very frustrated. This question of drugs, our we said drug is, that drug is used only by when they are very frustrated. They start using the drugs. So one thing I will request you that is in the interest of the industry also. Because industry needs skill people and the people want skill. So I will request the industry that every line of industries, supposing, supposing there is a textile industry, there is another pharmaceutical industry, any industry, that tourism industry, if all of them start skill centers in Punjab, who will provide them land? Even if they say, provide us building, we are already to do that. But the management should be there, so that the people, young men who are educated there and trained there, should be suitable for the job. And they could get the job immediately after getting the training here. As you know, many things should be has told you. And even the reliable institution like Reserve Bank has written after study, the best city state where investment is, is preferred investment, one of those three is Punjab. But one thing I want to say, that Punjab, as you know, the background history of the Punjab. The Punjab is a place, is a state, where the people of the state has done maximum for the country. First, when there was a war of independence, there was a fight, maximum sacrifices are made by the Punjab. Who can forget Sir Bhagat Singh, Sir Arunam Singh, Lala Jatpur, Lajpat Rai, the other? It is in the history, it is in the history that 80% of the those who sacrificed their lives, 90, 80 to 90% were Punjab. And all the big uh, movements like Babar Khalsa Lair, Kama Gata Maru Rahe, all was for then started from Punjab. So after the partition, even when the country was partitioned, the greatest sacrifices were to were to be made by the Punjabis because they have to part way from their homes, from their industry, from their lands, and come here. But they never 
as bad because they said that, okay, we are doing what our company has has got independence. So they never repent about it. Even after that, many times when the country needed better, now our area is only 1.35, or more than about 1.50. But we are contributing 50% of food needs required by country.